What is up YouTube, Bronze Tech here, and I just reviewed my first RTX 4060 laptop. Let me, let me wind the fans down. Oh no, not again. <sighs> and it's pretty impressive. I mean, you know, with the new laptops coming out this year, you're really only looking for a reduced wattage in the new RTX 4000 series cards. Now, this is pretty much the same exact MSI Katana that I reviewed last year where um, I was kind of upset about it, but uh, there are some things that are similar to it that I want to talk about and there are some different things that I will get into uh, in this video, but excited to be reviewing my first 2023 laptop. Is this year's set of, you know, RTX 4000 series cards, is it going to, you know, make the consumer base happy based on this performance let's find out hey guys just a quick reminder to like and subscribe so i review laptops that you can actually buy at retailers like best buy and costco keep in mind that other reviewers are sponsored they do get review units and those units are typically higher end configurations i specialize in reviewing lower end configurations that you will actually see at major retailers so help support this channel by liking and subscribing so i can report what i find with these devices Okay, on to the review. So there are a few different series that MSI has named their laptops in the past. The Katana, the Alpha, Bravo, and Blade. They all have a similar design, but the difference lies in their configurations. This configuration includes the Intel Core i7-12650H Intel processor, an RTX 4060 that goes up to 85 watts, 16 gigabytes of DDR5 RAM at 4800 MHz, and a 512 gigabyte SSD. The specs of the screen is a full HD 144Hz IPS panel with about 57% sRGB color accuracy and 250 nits of brightness. Again, this was the Achilles heel of last year's MSI Alpha, so nothing new here, and it's still the reason why I can't fully recommend this laptop given the fact that the QHD panels are currently making waves in the market. Still, it's one of the cheapest RTX 4000 series laptops you can get, and Micro Center has this on sale for under $1,000 USD regularly. So there's one major addition to this year's model, and that it does come with some new decal on the edges of the chassis. I think it's a step in the right direction, although overall, I'd like to see a new chassis change. The keyboard is exactly the same as last year. I love its consistent sound and typing experience, and I'd still rank it second to Asus's keyboards and over Lenovo Legion series. Now it's always exciting to review the latest series of Nvidia graphics cards, and even though this is an 85 watt version of the RTX 4060, I was pleasantly surprised in its performance. It's equivalent to last gen's 100 watt RTX 3070 found in the Zephyrus G15 and scores around the same as a fully powered RTX 3060. What you're also getting support with is DLSS3 which would help future proof this GPU for AAA titles to come. Not to mention the main theme centered around RTX 4000 series GPUs is less wattage meaning less heat and better thermals. So overall no complaints here as we all would like to see better performance even though this is only rated at 85 watts. It's a wonder why Intel didn't just add the fully powered i7-12700H processor to all their 2023 laptops or even the current gen i7, but for some reason they have decided to nerf some of these processors and release the 12650H in order to cut costs. It's still a marginally better performing CPU compared to the latest Ryzen 7000 series processors, but overall I'm disappointed in the fact that they are still releasing last year's processors paired with the latest 4000 series GPUs. Ideally, we'd like to see at least the current gen of i7 processors being paired with the RTX 4000, but I can't really complain since I don't need maximum core performance with my workload, given that I only really use it for 4K video editing, occasional gaming, and streaming. For those that need the extra juice and multi-core performance, go ahead and get that current generation i7 or even i9 processors, but keep in mind last year's CPUs still hold up well for pretty much anything you throw at it. So thermals are still amazing with this chassis, which is a big reason why I think MSI is keeping the design the same. The fans are similarly loud, peaking around 57 decibels in cooler boost mode, which is expected. No complaints here, especially when using Intel XTU, you can achieve great performance with great thermals. Here are the settings I used to make sure heat was well managed.
So in conclusion, again, uh, I wouldn't really recommend this unless you don't care about the panels that MSI is supplying for their Katana series, but it is a really good budget and it's a really good entry price point if you want to get an RTX 4000 series GPU. Again, it's not going to be the highest wattage GPU like you see in the Lenovo Legion laptops, which is why I think they are still better value. But, you know, if you really need that RTX 4000 series, I definitely would recommend looking at higher wattage options. These will regularly go on sale again at Costco and uh, Micro Center. So definitely think about picking them up again if you don't care about the panels. But overall, excited that, uh, you know, this review is out of the way because you know, it's really usually one of the first models, the first batch of RTX 4000 series laptops that are released for uh, the year of 2023. As the year goes on, Lenovo, um, Asus will start to release their laptops. And I think the next laptop I will be reviewing is the 14 inch version. Um, again, because I personally prioritize uh, portability and per like performance really comes second because I do have a desktop that I use to play video games and also stream which is why I kind of just don't really care too much about the, the high level performance of my laptops. If I was, if I only owned one PC and had like one laptop to run on like an ultra wide monitor, I would look into a higher performing device that has an RTX 4070, but uh, really happy with this, really happy with uh, the performance on this. The CPU ain't too bad as well, as long as you buy it for under a thousand bucks. So. That's my take here guys and I hope you guys like this video. Give it a like and subscribe. See you guys in the next video.